Let's take a look at configuring LDAP on OpenShift. So in my environment, I have FreeIPA running and Red Hat IDM, and they are replicas of each other in different environments. So I want to authenticate against that environment using LDAP. So I don't have to configure users for OpenStack and OpenShift and Overt and all the rest of them. I just want to do it once with LDAP and have that single sign-on capability. So it's really simple in in OpenShift, this is the documentation for it, which I'll link in the description. So configuring an LDAP provider. Basically, we go through this documentation. We set up a bind password, which I'm not going to use. Like I can query mine directly without using a bind password. So I'm just going to skip that part. But I will show you how to do it. So it's pretty simple. You just copy and paste this command but replace the secret part there with whatever password you want so that whole section gets replaced with whatever your password might be and then what we'll do in the config file is we'll point it to use a specific user so maybe you've created a user called LDAP admin and you've given it a password and that, that user has permissions to query the entire LDAP tree from IDM or with OpenStack maybe you've created one called Keystone you could reuse that here for example so if you have a CA certificate for your LDAP environment, you can upload the CA certificate here and that will allow it to authenticate. I'm just going to do mine insecure. It's only happening inside my own network and I don't really care. And then we basically just copy this sample file. So if you just click the copy section there and paste it into an LDAP CR.yaml and then we can edit it there and change it for however we want. So so in this, we can see that we're going to give it the LDAP attributes with some IDs, email. We're just mapping those attributes to the various um, objects that are going to be returned. But the important thing is how we query it using this URL down the bottom. So we want to give it an OU, a DC, and then we want to tell it which object we're going to use to map users. So in this case, a UID. We could use CN or, or anything like that. So the way I generally go about figuring that out is just by using LDAP search. So if we switch over to my terminal, do LDAP search, I probably have one here. Yeah, here we go, here's an example. So, you know, this doesn't need to be complicated. As I said, I'm not gonna use a bind user. So you know what, let's get rid of the bind user section. And let's get rid of this complex query. And we'll just add something really basic. So in my environment, I have an admin user. So let's search for UID admin. And there we go, that returns a result. So I know that that is a viable search to use against my LDAP domain. So the base domain here is bne-home.net and we break that down into DC BNE home comma DC equals net. This is going to be my LDAP server. We can see we're doing it without any TLS. And I'm just searching for the UID of admin and we can see that returns the user admin and I can see the various groups that it's a part of there. So for example this CN uses CN accounts DC BNE dash home DC net that's one we could use to narrow down the search if we wanted to set up a group specific to OpenShift we could then use that group specific for OpenShift. But we're just going to do it as, as simple as possible here and you can obviously get as complex or as simple as you want in your environment. So if we look at how that is defined in my cluster, we can see this is the outcome of that, that file. So in here we have, we're mapping all the same attributes that we saw from the example. I'm setting insecure to true so I don't have to use TLS and we can see in my URL here I've set it to users accounts DC home DC net and then I'm going to map all my users using the UID so if we go back up to that LDAP search we can see that I've used this search string so this is what I'm narrowing down users on any user that I create in free IPA in the users group will be able to authenticate with this cluster. And that's as simple as we can possibly make it. So we put that into a YAML file. So we'll just redo it like this, ldapcr.yaml, and we paste in our example file. So all I would need to do here is set insecure to true. I'm not using a bind. DN or password and I'm not using a CA so we can delete them 
I'll just delete the spaces at the end of each line here. So we give it a name as well. So in my case, it's bne-home.net. Um, and then we just change our URL there. So if we go back and grab the URL that I used. And we just want to replace this with that URL. So there we go, that's all we need to do to set up that domain. Um, we can see that it's going to apply it to the kind OAuth using the name cluster. And then it will set up the identity provider for bne-home.net. And then all I need to do is go and log into the console using a valid user. So I've obviously already done that, but if we wanted to apply it, we would do IC apply our chef. Like just like that. That's all we would need to do. If we switch over to my web browser, we can see the same thing here. This is what we were just looking at. But I can log out. We can see I have a domain here. I can log in as the admin user now, for example, because there is an admin account here. Now, I haven't given this user any permissions. I haven't added them as a cluster admin, for example. So the stuff that I can see as this user will be limited. taking a little bit longer because it's the first time I've logged in as this user so it's actually setting up that user we can see that I get the intro you know welcome to the developer perspective etc etc if I try to go to administrator there's not a lot I can see here because I don't have permissions to everything like I do with that other account so to add those permissions you would add them as a cluster administrator for example so if I want this admin user to have cluster admin access in this environment, what we can do is go back to our console and we will just do like this. So OC ADM policy, we're gonna add cluster role to a user. We're gonna add the cluster role cluster admin to our user called admin. So now that has been added, if I go back to this environment, we can now see I have access to all the projects immediately. I didn't need to log out and log back in. I just straight away have access to everything. So we go down to authentication, for example, we can see the OAuth pods. Everything is now accessible to the, this administrative user. So that's as simple as it is. Really, really simple in, in OpenShift. You just create that CR. If you wanted to use bind accounts, you would obviously go through those first couple of steps. And if you wanted to use the CA certificate, obviously upload your CA certificate as well. And then you can use LDAP-S instead of LDAP like I did. Um, if you want to search for it through the console instead of using the terminal like I did, it's just this OAuth um, resource here. So here it is here. And if you wanted to then add anything to it, you could just edit it straight through the console here as well. You don't need to use the, the terminal. So some people are more inclined to using the, the web UI and that's perfectly fine. It's all achievable here and you could do the same from scratch even if you didn't have this. Just go to the same resource, search for OAuth, go to cluster and just edit it here to set up whatever you want to set up. So that's as simple as it is. I, I hope that you found that informative. I hope you find it just as easy as me to set up LDAP. And I'm happy to take any questions if you run into any issues in the comments.